now that we've stacked and converted our file, um, I'm going to show you how to do um, the most basic adjustments to an uh, image like this. Um, first you want to neutralize the sky color and then you want to correctly set the black and white levels and then there's some other little tricks you can do to um, bring out the structure and like if it's a picture of the Milky Way or nebula like this um, it'll make it stand out a bit more um, this picture here it's hard to see before we process it but this is right here this red blotch is the North American nebula um, in which is sort of like right in a part of the Milky Way which is why the stars are so dense here so the first thing we want to do is place down some um, color sampler tools so you grab the color sampler tool right here and then you want to find a spot in your picture where there's no stars and actually sorry before you do that go up here to sample size and use a 5x5 five five average. Um, if you have an older DSLR and say it's only like 6 megapixels, you could use a 3x3 three three average, but if you're like 10 megapixels or up, just use 5x5. Five five. And then find a spot uh, where there's no stars and just click. And then you want to grab the color sampler tool again and find your brightest star here's mine and then it's going to the, go right to the middle of it and click and once you do that you'll notice on the info panel if you don't have the info panel you can just find it by going to window and then click info and then over here you have number one and two number one is the first one we placed which is the black one and here's the white one so it shows the individual levels for red green and blue so the first thing we do is go to image adjustments levels. Um, click this button here to set the gray point. And again, you want to click on an area uh, that has no stars. And you can see that kind of just neutralizes the background, makes it close to gray. And you can see the how that also changed the numbers up here in the info panel. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, set the black level. So we go back to levels again. But in, you want to individually do each color channel. So first go to red. And then you grab the black slider here. And as you slide it, you're going to want to watch the color sampler readout up here. Where it says 67. And we want to bring down each color well, let's for now let's just bring them down to around 30. You want them all to be roughly the same number. If it's off by one or two, it's okay. And blue. Alright, click OK then. So usually you don't want to go much darker than this for the sky background because you know a lot of people might think you want to process the image and make the sky completely black, but that's not how the sky is. Plus if you do that, you're gonna just you're gonna lose so much detail. And you'll lose a lot of stars too. Some of the fainter stars in here. Like a lot of these stars are really faint. Um, you want to go back to levels again, and this time, instead of adjusting the black, we're going to adjust the white over here, number two. So you go to each channel again, so we'll start at red. And this time you grab the white slider, and you want to slide it over until all the numbers are 255, which is the maximum brightness. As you can see, this adjusted my black numbers a bit, but that's okay because they're all still the same. But if they're off, you, you're going to want to go back and adjust those again because the black numbers are more important. And 
now that you've done that, um, if if your image has no Milky Way or nebulosity or anything like that, this is a good starting point. You don't really have to do any more besides, you know, just processing it to taste or whatever with any plugins you might have. But one thing I like to do since I have some nebulosity and stuff is uh, use this here as image adjustments, shadows, and highlights. And we, you just want to adjust the shadows section. Forget the highlights. Um, if you don't see these options, you just have to click this here, show more options. Um, put the color correction down to zero. And then for shadows, um, this is going to make um, shadow details stand out more. So in the case of this, the structure and the Milky Way and the nebula, because they are st still really dark. So you don't want to go too overboard. Like I usually keep it between like 25 and 45. So I'll just set it to 40 for now. And if you slide the tonal width, you'll also see differences. You can adjust this to taste, really. I mean, we're not making scientific images here. And the radius. Putting a high radius seems to make the nebula punch out in a the really crowded areas of stars they look like they pop out more. Um, if this makes the the your sky background too bright, it didn't really for mine. Mine's still a pretty good. Sh actually, it darkened mine, which is okay, because the parts that darkened are the the dark lanes in the Milky Way. The other the other sky background is still pretty. It's in the 30s, which is good. Um, but if it did make your sky background too bright, there's this thing here called black clip. And by adjusting that, you can see how it makes it darker. So, mine's okay at the default, but, uh, oops. But there's always that to work with if it uh, messes up your background. So, let me click OK. Now you can see it just, uh, it just pops like pops out a lot more like here I'll revert to the original I mean look at that I'll go back so this is looking pretty good but I want the the color to stand out about a bit more like the red nebula here um, if you used a modified DSLR like that's been had the infrared filter removed this red stuff would pop out a lot more but since I don't, I'm going to have to artificially make it pop out. So what I'm going to do is go to Select, uh, Color Range, and I'm going to select um, what's the best way to do this. I'm going to select the highlights, or the midtones. So this should select all of the stars, the bright and the, the super bright and the mid the uh, not so bright ones and then I'm gonna because I don't want to I don't want to just I'm gonna adjust the saturation now and I don't want to touch the stars because it'll it'll uh, create artifacts on them because they're already really bright um, so I'm gonna invert the selection so now I have everything but the stars selected so I'm gonna go to image adjustments Hue and saturation, and I'm just gonna put the saturation up a bit, say like plus 30. You want to be careful. You don't want to go too high, or else because if you go too high, you'll create these stupid artifacts like that. I mean, that looks stupid. So let's try around 20 to 30. Click OK, and then deselect. And it's coming out a bit more. Still, you can still think I can bring it out a bit more though. Another thing you can do to try to bring out this color is um, image adjustments, uh, selective color. So these are magentas. So I'll go to magentas. And I'll just play with these sliders. Let's, we'll see if they pop out more. 
which they are. So yeah, that's a little better. So now you can see a lot of red here, some down here, and a bunch up here too. Now uh, you could take this a step further and like make a nice detailed selection of just this. Being careful not to select the stars because you don't want to adjust the color of those. And you can bring out the color even further, but I'm pretty happy with this right now. So yeah, this is just a basic processing. Um, you can you can do this the same stuff to uh, images with uh, landscape in them, but for some of the stuff I did, like the the shadow and highlights and the saturation, you're probably just going to want to select the sky and do it to that instead of the landscape or else the landscape might come out looking weird. So yeah, hopefully you learned something.